rubbish. You have no power here. Be gone before somebody drops the house on you too. Toto? Feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. You want to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. You find the Okay, let's get into the next, last, but the one I've been waiting for for a long time. The next and last segment, which is Everything is Oz. I don't know why I'm dancing because I don't know what the music is. I don't know what the intro is. I don't know nothing about it. I, I, I don't even know if I did the intro. It might just be a car and that's probably what's going to be because I ain't got time for all that. Okay, so Everything is Oz. I did this idea... I realized this growing up because y'all know I love The Wizard of Oz. And what happens is every time I watch the movie, I would realize this is the same. This is The Wizard of Oz. What the? Oh, and I, not every movie, not literally every single movie, but a lot of movies follow this pattern of The Wizard of Oz and you just got to pay attention to all the signs. Okay? So I'm going to give you the signs before I give you examples. And this is how you know. So the for one of the easiest signs one of the easiest signs is when they say toto we're not in kansas anymore or i don't think we're in kansas anymore. any time and any movie that uses that line as just a like a, a, a as a way to say things have shifted we're not where we were before is follow is probably following the pattern of the wizard of oz whether they know it or not so that's your first first sign now usually there's like a lost character in some way Okay, and it's not always Dorothy. Um, it, it could easily be another character that's lost or or the focus, and you'll see some examples later on, where the focus isn't Dorothy, it's another character, but in, yet and still, it's still the story of the Wizard of Oz. Okay, uh, here's another example. If they have the book or the poster in any way, if it's in the background, if they do a shot where they show the book, if it's a shot where they show the, the text, and you'll be shocked how many times they do that, it's because it's the story of the Wizard of Oz. This, your movie you're watching, doesn't matter the movie, if they show these things, you're probably watching the story of the Wizard of Oz. Okay? Typically, they have four main characters that go on a journey, and they usually collect them on the way to the end of the story. Okay? The other one, if there's a man behind the curtain, if they mention that saying like, oh, man behind the curtain or something like that, or if there's literally a person who was this way or known as a certain way through the whole movie, a really most important person, and at the end realizes, nah, they, 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 he ain't what they, he ain't what he said he was. Okay, what the catfish is going on? When you get that, you're probably watching The Wizard of Oz. Okay? And my last, like, sign to know if you're watching The Wizard of Oz um, is... Usually there's a Wicked Witch type of character that's searching for the ruby slipper. That's searching for the same thing. The main, the main character is trying to hold on to something or get something. And then the, the witch is trying to, the bad character of that movie is trying to do the same thing. So it's not like one of these things, but like, especially if you see a combination of all that, you're watching The Wizard of Oz. So let me give you some examples. Now I did this to myself because the, the, the way I did this means I got to put a lot of pictures up and I don't know why I'm doing this when I got so much going on today and I got to leave soon to go see Wicked. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> so we're going to start with Severance because I think Severance is the number one. First of all, Severance is coming out season two, Apple TV, January 17th. All right. We're going to do a movie, um, I mean, an episode per episode review and breakdown on the channel. And right now, the one we're doing right now is Silo. It's already doing good numbers. 
even a copyright release. So I hope they do that with every episode. So go ahead and check it out because this Friday is going to be episode two. So check that out. Okay, back to it. So I'm going to try to do this a little bit fast. And I also even po- put the names there for the listeners so that I'm just not I'm not just pointing. Okay, so we'll do this kind of quickly. Severance, because I have a few examples. So Severance, the four main characters. Okay, you got Mark. Mark is the Scarecrow. Hallie, uh, Helly is Dorothy. Um, Irving is the Tin Man. Dylan is the Lion. And then... Uh, I hope I say her name right. Singarino. Ooh, I'm probably saying it wrong. It's Toto. Okay. So before we get there, Toto, I didn't know, I couldn't understand who Toto was until I started doing these movie actions of the Wizard of Oz. Toto serves as the main character's desire and drive and motivation to keep going forward. So any character or being or thing in a movie that's kind of letting, it's driving, moving the character forward, whether they talk or not is that character and this character in the show and i'm gonna try to do no spoilers especially for severance um is his uh oh i don't know what i'm saying uh, okay i don't want to say this because it'll spoil this character is um the like the therapist in lumen and that's all i can say without spoiling but she kind of serves as toto in many ways okay the elevator is the tornado okay Mixing up the minds to get you to go from one world to the next world. Okay. Lumen is definitely odds in the conversation. Okay. Oh, I just realized I didn't put the wizard in here. Okay. But I don't feel like it. Okay. Home is home for this. Like his, the real world is his real, is home. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Harmony, um, Harmony Cobell is the wicked witch. I mean, come on, look at her. (laughs) Come on now. Come on now. The brother-in-law, I forgot the name in the character, but the brother-in-law's book, his red book, is the Ruby Slippers. Okay? A lot of times the Ruby Slippers is the thing that get the thing that takes you home in some way. Or the thing that brings you to reality, or the thing that brings you brings gives you the truth of what you need, usually. Um, and in this case, it's uh the book, the brother-in-law's book. Okay. Um, the poppy field for this one is um the final episode and that's all i'm gonna say the final episode kind of reveals what the poppy field is but i don't want to give it away because it'll be a spoiler okay uh and then felicia is glinda felicia is the one if if i'm not mistaken is the one who was like i can i can unsever you i got the answers to unsever you and i think that i think that is glinda in the story Okay, uh, and the wizard, I might not do the wizard for everyone, but the wizard here is the owner of Lumen. Okay, okay, let me put it here so I don't forget. Okay, because I have to get a picture. Okay, wizard, I might not do the wizard for the rest because I didn't think it out, but I know for sure it is for there. Okay, next example, The Labyrinth. Love that movie, one of my favorite movies. Okay, we're gonna move along. Um, four main characters, so Sarah is Dorothy. Huggle is the Scarecrow. Uh, uh, is it Didius? Didymus? Didymus? Demius? Y'all know I can't respell the count. Um, the Tin Man. Uh, Ludo is the Lion. And Ambrosius and Toady. Tabby is Toto. So Ambrosius is just a dog. So, I mean, just by physical embodiment is Toto, right? But if we're talking about what's driving her, because remember I said Toto is like the character that kind of drives her forward, it would really be Toby. And Toby isn't even with her, but Toby is her little brother that she's trying to get back. But that's the thing that's moving her forward, her desire, her main like thing that's keeping her staying. Because if, okay, if Toby's not there, what's the point? There's a lot of times where Dorothy's like, all she's thinking about is home and Toto. Because Toto is the closest thing to home. It's the closest thing you're going to get. It is a piece of her home with her. I'm thinking, I'm realizing this as I'm saying. So anything that's kind of like that, and I think her brother was that. I had, I thought it was the Ruby Slippers, but as I started to re- break down the story, no. Okay? Um, and then I didn't know what the tornado was, but the tornado is the orb scene. This is when the uh, God was playing with the orb. That moment is her transition from one part to another. That scene is the tornado. 
okay? The Goblin City is obviously Oz. I mean, the whole thing. And that breaks down into pieces too, but we're not going to, you know, much can lay and all that stuff. But we're not going to go into all that. Um, her home is her home. So, you know, she, her focus isn't going back home. Her focus is getting her little brother. So kind of that's her home as well. But she also does want to get out of there and go home. So her home is her home. Um, Jared, the gob Jareth, the Goblin King played by David Bowie. I mean, I mean, fantastic role. Um, he's a wicked witch. Very, very clearly, um, the villain, the bad guy, right? The Ruby Slippers, which I thought was Toby, is actually her play script. So in the beginning of the movie, she's reading these lines from the script. And she's trying to remember this line. What is this line? What is this line? And she keeps forgetting the line. And then at the end, the, I don't care. This is not a spoiler because this movie is 85,000 years old. At the end of the movie, the way she defeats the Goblin King, gets her brother back and goes home, is when she reads the line, you have no power over me. And that, that realization, that mindset, that way of thinking, that way of being, is her clicking heels three times and going home. Because she realized that he may change time. He can change the pattern of the maze. He can move my brother from here to here. He can do all these things. But the one thing he cannot do is have power over Dorothy. In this case, over Sarah. Ah, oh, love that. Love that concept. Anyway, that's her ruby slippers. Um, and then this one's unique. Sarah is Glinda. The main character is Glinda. <laughs> I was like, where's Glinda? Where? She is Glinda. She's her own Glinda in this story. That's why this story is so powerful. She is her own Glinda. Even wearing the puffy dress and everything. She is her own because she has a poppy seed moment. And in Wizard of Oz, her poppy seed moment, Dorothy, uh, when Dorothy falls asleep in the poppy seed field, Glinda gets her out of it. But when she falls asleep, she gets herself out of it <laughs> with remembering herself, her own memory of knowing who she is and knowing what she uh, has gets her out of it okay and that's the song um as as the world falls down <laughs> i wasn't even gonna bring this up so this movie so my a close friend of mine well actually a cousin who was a friend and basically like a sister to me uh before she saw this movie me and a, a real like my best friend was singing a song from this movie and, but she never knew the movie before. But then when she finally saw the movie and then saw the song in the movie, she's like, oh, I thought it was a black person that sung this song. <laughs> because the way we were singing it. The song is, uh, you remind me of the babe. The babe with the power. The power of voodoo, who do you do? Remind me of the babe. He said, I saw my baby crying hard as babe could cry. What can I do? My baby love had gone and left my baby blue. Look, cracking and everything. Nobody knew. Anyway. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> that's my movie. That is my movie. Okay. And then, last but not least, my fifth favorite movie of all time, The Fifth Element. But The Fifth Element is The Wizard of Oz. Very much so. Very much so. You can see her here. Part of the Wizard of Oz here. Okay, so the four main characters. So you got... Um, so you have... Lilu, who is Dorothy. And then Corbin Dallas, who is the Scarecrow. So this story is unique because the Dorothy is not the main character. I mean, she's a main character, but the main character is the Scarecrow. Like, we're looking at it from Corbin Dallas's perspective, who is actually the Scarecrow of the story. Um, but... Uh, Dorothy is Lilo's. Um, so Cornelius is the Tin Man, and then Ruby Rod is the Lion. I, I mean, he even has like a leopard uh, esque outfit on. So obviously, he is the Lion. Uh, and then um, Toto here. Um, what, I didn't write it here. Who would Toto be? Let me think. Because I, I thought I wrote it, but I guess I didn't. Let me think. So wait, Dorothy, if, hmm, I don't know, because the main character might have, because it's, it's being shared, because Corbin Dallas, even though he's a scarecrow in this perspective, he's also kind of Dorothy in other ways. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe in the comments, if you have an idea who you think Toto or what Toto would be in this story, let me know. Let me know. Okay. Um, I'm going to put a question mark here because I actually didn't get a chance to think it out and I really don't know. But maybe you guys might have an idea. Toto's a, a complicated one in many times. Okay. Um, and then the tornado is Lilo's fall. So when she 
when she falls into that um, taxi, that fall is the tornado. Okay, to get her from one world to the next world. Okay, and then Lilo's memory is her home. So, because she doesn't remember anything and she's collecting all this new data and all this new information about this new world and because she's, what, was it 300 or 500 years of sleep? She was sleeping for, I think it was 300 years. I forgot the number. But for hundreds of years, she's been sleeping. So she wakes up with no knowledge of this new world, of this time, and she has to get that back. And I think that is her home in this story for her. Um, and then Zorg and the evil planet is the Wicked Witch. Um, they kind of serve as the same person, kind of. I mean, maybe they're the two witches, but it doesn't really fall that way. So you can kind of like Witch of the West, Witch of the East, maybe. Um, but not really, not really. And then, um, where am I looking? Where am I looking? Where am I looking? Oh, okay. The stones are the ruby slippers. The stones are the things that save the day that takes them home at the end. Um, and it's the thing that they're looking for. The evil one and the good person is both looking for the stones because they know how powerful it is. But the stones are inside of who? The blue diva. And who is the blue diva? Glenda. Come on now. It's all written there. Now, those are the main movies that are The Wizard of Oz. But I wanted to do two that are honorable mention. And the reason why they're honorable mention is because they're not the story of The Wizard of Oz, but they're actually the story of Alice in Wonderland. Okay? So, some movies, they follow the pattern of The Wizard of Oz, but some movies, they follow the pattern of, pa pattern of Alice in Wonderland, which are very similar. The way I look at it is the difference between the Alice in Wonderland and The um, Wizard of Oz is The Wizard of Oz is a journey with friends and family. I was wondering, it's a journey alone, which makes it a little bit darker, a little bit more scary, a little bit more edgy, okay? So I only got two examples, but I think they fit perfectly in the Alice in Wonderland explanation. The first one is The Matrix. The Matrix is definitely, definitely, okay? Definitely, definitely Alice in Wonderland. Not an exact one-to-one -one like this character, this character, but just some good, good examples of it. First sign, there's a sign um, when they said, uh, we're going to go down the rabbit hole. Anytime you mention the rabbit hole, the looking glass, the hourglass, anything in that realm, chances are the movie is following the pattern of Alice in Wonderland. Alice is obviously Neo, okay? The Mad Hatter is Morpheus. The, and then even, there's even a mouse. We even got the mouse at the table. Uh, literally, his name is Mouse. Um, and he very much is sitting at this long table with all these characters, all this whimsical wackiness in uh, Wonderland. Wonderland is the Matrix. Well, hmm. Yeah, the Matrix is Wonderland. And then home is in the Nebuchadnezzar um, ship. And then in the real world, even though the real world... It looks bad as well. Um, um, the caterpillar is the oracle. So the cat caterpillar is usually the character that stops the main character in their tracks and questions who they are. Who are you? Who do you think you are? Who do you believe you are? What is real? What do you think is real? Who do you think you are? Any character that stops the main character and says, who are you? Typically is the caterpillar and in this case it's the oracle okay the cheshire cat um this one is anyone or anything that will confuse them that makes their makes their brain go all over the place or makes it a complicated situation okay i think this is a combination of cyber who was the one that was like I'm a, I'm a, you know, I know I'm on the good side, but let me forget my memories. I ain't trying to be a part of this. I mean, his name even starts with a C, but it also could be Neil's, um, it could be Neil's, like, lack of faith in reality in the beginning and that feeling of not really knowing which way to go, not knowing what's real, what's not real. I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys think who the Cheshire Cat is in The Matrix. And then last but not least, the, king, uh, the Queen of Hearts is Agent Smith. Very simple, very simple. Okay, and then last but not least, another movie that is definitely Alice in Wonderland 
The Devil Wears Prada. Hands down, this one might follow even better than The Matrix. Okay, Alice is Adrian. I mean, A and A. Come on, we're already getting there. Alice is Adrian, and the Queen of Hearts is Miranda Priestly. Let's not end the conversation off with your head. Not even a question. Not even a question. The Mad Hatter is Emily. Even her hair is red. The Mad Hatter is Emily. And then she even has her little co-worker friend, her little corny co-worker friend. She's the hair, right? She even kind of, they even kind of have the Mad Hatter in the hair. Very much easily, boom. The Caterpillar is Nigel. The Caterpillar is Nigel. I was going to say he was the Mad Hatter, but it was because of the conversation that, remember when, um, if you've seen the movie, uh, um, Adrian is like just not feeling it, not, not understanding why Miranda's not getting it. And just, she's, he's, she crying to Nigel and Nigel's like, who are you? Girls would die to fill these shoes. Who are you? What are you? Right. What did I say? The character kind of stops the, and then they, they have a shift in reality or understanding that person's caliber. And I think in this case, it would be Nigel. Okay. Uh, the Cheshire cat, I think in this case, it maybe is the Christopher Thomas character, the one she cheated on, cheated with on her boyfriend. Uh, because that was when things got really complicated and she realized she already ran too deep. She already, she already, she already passed where she needed to be. If it's another character, let me know. But um, I think there's that. Then you even have the Tweedledee, Tweedledum. You even got the twins. <laughs> uh, uh, Miranda Priestley's uh, daughters. Come on now. You even got the twins. And you even have the King of Hearts, which is the Queen of Hearts' husband, Miranda Priestley's husband. Um, and the, queen, the King of Hearts is unique because this is usually when the Queen of Hearts has so much power and the King has like none. Just kind of there. And that is very much Miranda Pizzi's husband. Just kind of like, just kind of there. <laughs> just kind of there. Okay, you guys. I really enjoyed that. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I don't know if I'm going to put this clip. Usually I put this cl any clips from here on the podcast. But I think I might put this clip over it. Um, on the main movie channel just because it fits that type of genre quite a bit so we'll we'll see where i put it after kind of make a decision on that no just ask jay today one because it's not really wizard of Oz theme and i just don't feel like it plus i ain't got much time left so we're going to kind of move on okay you guys remember be kind and mind your business see you soon think to yourself there's no place like home there's no place like home there's no place like home. There's no place like home.